You probably have a 5G phone, and it might say 5G in the corner and present four bars indicating a signal strength that is high. But that doesn't mean that you necessarily get the 5G-like experience, because that depends on what kind of base station your mobile phone is connected to. There are both real 5G base stations and there are fake ones that are still building on old hardware. So I'm standing here in Shista, a commercial area in Stockholm, where Ericsson, who builds 5G base stations, have their headquarters. And here's my 5G phone, and I will measure the speed. And it goes up to 800, 900, over 1 gigabit per second sometimes. So this is the download speed. I can also upload things with 150 megabit per second, which is all the extraordinary fast. Much more than I would ever need for most kinds of file transfers. The latency is below 10 milliseconds. So this is definitely the kind of 5G experience that you want to have. But it's not available everywhere, even if you have good service quality. I'm now in a village on the countryside in Sweden, and I also have 5G coverage here with the full number of bars. So let's measure the speed I can get in this case. So in the downlink, we reach up to some 150, 60, 70 megabit per second. So quite a good speed, but not at all the same as we were seeing in the city center. In the uplink, we have some 50 megabit per second. So also a decent speed. Let's see now what the latency is, say 14 milliseconds. So all of these numbers are really great, but it's not at all the same as we saw before, even if we have 5G with the full number of bars. So what's the reason for that? Well, it has to do with the network behind this. To understand what is going on, I went to the coverage maps that my telecom operator provides on its website. They have 4G coverage all over Sweden. So this is the purple area here. We have Stockholm city center. I did my first measurements in Chista over here and my second measurement in the countryside where you see the red dot. And all over the place, there is very good coverage for 4G. The operator also have 5G coverage, which is a little bit more limited, and it has 5G plus coverage, which is particularly in the urban areas and not very much in the countryside. And now we can notice the difference here. My second measurement were done at a location where I don't have 5G plus, but only 5G and 4G coverage. While the coverage in the Sista location where I did my first very fast measurements, there we also have 5G+, plus, so it's thanks to that that I get very high speeds. So what is the difference between 5G and 5G+, plus? well what my operator call 5G is just using a 4G frequency band, using base station hardware designed for 4G, but running a mix of 4G and 5G software on it, so it behaves a little bit like 5G when it connects to a 5G enabled device. And I've verified all of this using the iPhone field test mode. So what they call 5G is more like a fake 5G running in the N1 band for 4G, which is an FTD band where you use the uplink and downlink at two different frequencies. The uplink is at 1.9 gigahertz and the downlink at 2.1 gigahertz. And there my operator has 20 megahertz in each of these different directions. And we were measuring a downlink speed of 163 megabit per second and uplink 42 megabit per second. So how do we get this type of numbers? Well, mathematically, we can compute some kind of theoretical bit rates that you should expect. So here's a formula for that. Two comes from that we are transmitting between two different polarizations, signals oscillating in different ways to the same device. 20 from the 20 megahertz that we have in either directions. And then there is a so-called channel formula, log two or one plus a signal to noise ratio, which was measured to be 13 dB in the downlink. If you do the math here, we see that we get 175, which is not too far off from the 163 that we were measuring. In the uplink, the signals are typically weaker because the mobile phone has much less power to transmit with than the base station. If we assume that it has 10 times lower power, then the signal to noise ratio, SNR, becomes 10 times weaker. We put this into the formula and we get 63, which is also not too far off from what we actually measured. Why are these numbers smaller? Well, typically not everything that we are transmitting contains data. There is some overhead signaling in order to synchronize with the base station, learn the channels and things like this. So this has typical numbers that matches quite well. But an important thing is that if this would have been a 4G system operating in the same band, it would only have been some 0 to 20% faster than we were measuring. And that is why I call this fake 5G. 
In the real 5G system in Chista, this is what we were using. A 5G band N78, which is a time division duplex band that uses the same frequencies both for uplink and downlink, but switches between them in time. So 74% is used for the downlink and 23% for the uplink. And then there are some switching times in between. So there is 100 megahertz of spectrum there in the 3.6 gigahertz band for my operator. And we are measuring these numbers, say 957 megabit per second in downlink and 157 in the uplink. So how can we calculate those numbers? Well, the theoretical bit rate is once again two times because we have two polarizations, 100 because I have 100 megahertz of spectrum, times 0 0.74 because we're using that percentage for the downlink, and then we have log 201 plus the signal to noise ratio, which was 20 dB in this measurement. And that leads to 985, which is not too far off from what we actually measured. In the uplink, we do something similar, but now we have instead only 23% of the time for the uplink. And we have reduced the SNR by 10 times and we get 159, which is also very close to the measured values. So this is a real 5G system, but it's still of the so-called non-standalone kind, where we are using base stations that uses real 5G hardware and frequency bands, but the core network behind them is still based on 4G. The real 5G system is not only faster, but it also has a larger capacity, which becomes very important when you have many users using the network at the same time. So the fake 5G system have a base station that is sending a signal into a sector. And all of the users that are there, they need to take turns. And therefore, when there are more users, the speed per user becomes lower. However, in the real 5G system, we are using a technology called Massive MIMO, when we are sending signals that are directed towards the different users. And therefore, some eight users or so can use the same base stations at the same time using all of the spectrum and therefore get this measured bit rate simultaneously. So that is really a big benefit of 5G that you might not notice yourself when you're just measuring your speed. So we have noticed that the telecom operator have multiple frequency bands and they are providing different balances between coverage range and capacity. So at the bottom, we have the 4G band, which are typically around 700 megahertz and that one have a large coverage, but the capacity and bit rate that it can deliver is relatively small. Then we have the band that we call 5G in this case, which is around two gigahertz and it provides a larger capacity, but a slightly shorter range. And then we have the 5G plus band around 3.6 gigahertz that has a vastly higher bit rate and capacity. And it is in this new band where we can run Massive MIMO and get all of the features that 5G is claimed to provide. However, the operator is using 5G in the 2 GHz band and it will soon use it also at the lower frequencies. This raises the important question, is it fair to call everything 5G regardless of what frequency bands we are using? Well, technically it's correct because we are running 5G software in that frequency band, but it's of course deceiving from a marketing perspective because you get vastly different performance. But as a customer, you might be feeling that the performance is good enough and then you will be happy. It will become better when we introduce standalone 5G and update the core network behind it, because that is providing some new network slicing features where you can have a tunable speed and reliability and energy consumption and adapt that to what kind of device and user application you're having. And those features can be available everywhere. But of course, still the range of speeds and latencies that you can get will depend on what kind of frequency band you're using. The interesting thing will just be what will the telecom operator call 5G standalone when they already use the term 5G and 5G+. Will this be 5G++?